Do you want to be in the vlog? It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with it. I've never been in a vlog before. Just introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Ethan LeBrant. I think I'm a photographer. One of the things I love about photography is talking with other photographers and meeting new photographers. Photography for me has become this way um, where it's not just something that I practice and do by myself, but it's connected me to a group of just awesome and amazing people. Uh, that's why you saw Ethan at the beginning of this video. Him and I have been talking on Instagram, I think for a year now at this point. We finally got together a few weeks ago and uh, the first conversation that we had, it, you know, I'll just show you, I'll just show you. Just for the for the sake of the audience. Uh, Nikon Z6 with the 70 to 200 and I have a 50 mil prime in there and a 14 to 24. Oh, so. We basically brought the exact same kit except I brought the RF version for the Canon. If it's not about what camera do you shoot with, the following question is always, what lenses did you bring or what lenses are you using? And I figured I'd make this video to actually talk about the three lenses that I have been using the most now over the last probably six months or so, because it's kind of like an RF Trinity, but there's some modifications, there's some differences, and there's actually one lens that I kind of wish I got a different version of it when I initially bought it, but I will hold that to the end. And maybe this will help you decide what lens you wanna purchase next or what kind of kit you wanna build out for your photography needs. I'm just gonna get right into it. The uh, the lens that gets me the most work makes me like the vast majority of my money, which if you would have asked me that like two years ago, uh, if this lens, if I thought this lens would be the lens that would be doing all that heavy lifting, I would have been like, no, you're crazy. This is like a wildlife zoom lens, right? It's like one of the Canon RF white lenses. This is the RF 70 to 200 f2.8. I've already made a video about this on my channel. I titled it, I think, the Epic Travel Photography Lens. Yeah, that's basically what this is. What I didn't know about this lens that I wish I knew two years ago when I first started out, because I think this is one of the more recent lenses that I purchased in the last year. It was not the first lens that I purchased, and I was actually really hesitant to purchase it because I thought it would be really like a niche lens. But now over the last six to, I think I've actually had it for maybe almost a year now, this lens has pulled its weight and more. First off, when it comes to shooting brands and people and in environments, this lens absolutely rocks that order. Like every time I shoot with this lens, people ask me like, how did you get this shot? How did, how did this come to be? And, and dang, like these are the shots that I find stop clients in their tracks, stop other creators in their tracks and, and make them really go like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I want more of that, please. Some of these shots include like the shots that I did with my buddy Sam for a commercial that he was directing. Uh, some shots that I did with my friend Chuck, the crocodile as you may know him. Uh, my buddy Cody. Cody. <laughs> Go follow, I'm, I'm gonna link all these guys down below. But even Ethan, some of the shots that I took or if you guys saw the sequence of shots that I posted to Instagram earlier this week or last week or whenever you're watching this, I'll link it down below. All of that whole sequence, that entire post that I did of sort of that whole day with Ethan ended up actually all being the stuff that I shot on this 70 to 200. But this lens isn't just for the sort of punchy, really like focal compressed shots of people. I mean, that's what it does really well. But I find that like in certain scenarios, this ends up being my favorite landscape lens as well. I've shot some of my most favorite landscape shots with this lens. I mean, Laguna Beach, uh, up here in the PNW, I've been able to do so many awesome shots with this lens. And this lens has actually pulled double duty, maybe even triple duty, because uh, with this lens, I've foregone the 85-1.2, which is an incredible lens, but it's very narrowly focused at sort of that portraiture angle of things. I've kind of held off on buying the 100 millimeter macro because I've been able to get some really great 100 millimeter f2.8 compression. I know it doesn't have the magnification part of it, but doing stuff like EDC shots or doing things like more detail shots, uh, this lens also does that as well. You can also love the like trees and the fog, PNW kind of shots that you can get with this. And especially combined with the R5, being able to crop in on that 45 megapixel sensor, that's also kind of helped me hold off on getting the 100 to 500. So really this lens has sort of like covered 
I guess the 100 to 500, the 100 mil macro, the 85, this lens en ended up being just such a value house. A value house, that is a, that's a interesting choice of words, Stephen. That's not on the script, <laughs> but it is. It's like this lens has given me probably the most value of my entire kit. I'm leading, I'm leading the charge. I'm leading the video with like the, I think the lens that like, for what I do, this is it. So that's why it has a place in the kit. This is actually the lens that like, I pretty much don't go anywhere without. The one place recently, I think in the last six months that I did not take it to was on the Mexico trip to Morelos. And I instantly regretted it because when I took that shot at Popo Catepeto, I had to do it with the 50 mil. Wasn't the same. I'm coming back, Popo Catepeto. I'm bringing this. Whew. Now at the center of this kit, the RF Trinity you should actually buy is the Canon RF 50 mil. You guys heard me talk about this. I think it was funny that Ethan had basically the exact same kit that I did. The RF 50 mil 1.2 is I think Canon's best RF prime so far. I'm still waiting for the 35 millimeter F 1.2. I'd really love to see that lens as soon as possible. <laughs> That's like, but the 50 1.2 is absolutely amazing. This is the lens that behind the 70 to 200 has gotten me probably the most work and also produce the most value, just kind of second only to the 70 to 200. Not only has it been great for some of these like photo and lifestyle shots for different brands that I've worked with, some of my favorite thumbnails that I've shot for this channel, like the EDC video that I did this past year or the Moment CP filter video that I did this past year, both of those were shot on this 50 millimeter lens. I will say though, this lens is highly underrated for landscapes as well. There's a little bit of compression because it is 50, but if you really need to like air out the space and just have something that feels big still without going maybe down to like a 15 to 35 or 14 to 35, this lens still gets the job done. I'll show you guys a few shots here of some of the shots that I've been able to do on the 50 that look a lot bigger than 50 or not as compressed as 50, but I find, especially out here in the PNW and even down on some of the travels in Mexico and some of the other places that we've been, this particular 50 millimeter prime has just done so well. But the thing that it does absolutely shine at is the, that portraiture, that product photography. And I will say this though, it's kind of been a fun lens to just take around and just have on the camera, especially if I'm not shooting video and I just wanna say, you know, I'm gonna go out and just shoot photos today of whatever it is we're doing. This lens has ended up being like my favorite lens to sort of just take around and take photos with because I'm not changing, I'm not zooming, you know, I'm not really thinking about anything. It's like that fixed focal length prime feeling. You get out there, you take photos and they look great, they look awesome. So as far as the RF kit goes, what does this compete with? I already made a whole video talking about the 24 to 70 and the 28 to 70 for the RF mount. If you haven't seen it for some reason, I will link it down below so you can check it out. I ended up choosing the 24 to 70. It was more versatile for my needs as a hybrid shooter doing both photo and video. Again, I don't shoot weddings and I don't really do out and out portraiture for my business, for my work. So that lens didn't make sense for me, but um, what I will say is nothing beats a prime. I know people want to talk about the 28 to 70 being a prime killer. It's not. And as good as the 24 to 70 F2.8 is, having something that goes F1.2, having something that is a prime, having something that's native made by Canon, so Canon glass on a Canon body, there's something that's just a step up here, I think with this lens. Now that doesn't mean to say that like, I think Sigma makes great lenses. Tam I've seen some of the Tamron stuff. Even if you go back to like older EF glass and just adapt that onto your R5, I think that's a great way to get really awesome primes on your RF mount body. At the end of the day, centerfold on the RF platform, I think the 50 mil is the thing that you want sitting in there, especially having the 35 on one end, which I'm kind of giving away with the next lenses. I should put this over here so I can actually talk about it. And the final lens for my sort of Trinity carry that I have is the 15 to 35 F2.8. This is actually the 24 to 70 because the 15 to 35 is what's shooting this video. But there's sort of a twist to this lens and, and I'll explain it to you here. 
first of all, the 15 to 35 has been my most shot with lens. When I actually pulled photos for this video to look through and see, you know, what are some of my best shots? What are some of my favorite shots over the last year or so shooting on this R5 and, and with this glass? Hands down, like the, the 15 to 35 F2.8 is the lens that I've shot the most photos with and had the most favorites that I pulled in to like curate for this video. I use this lens for the self-portrait project that I did uh, last year. I use this lens for the Oregon coast trip that I did with my wife and my sister-in-law. I use this lens just a ton on the glacier trip with Cody. This lens got a a massive workout in the Seattle Trilogy vlog that I did with Sam. And this lens pulled heavy weight over Dia Los Muertos in Mexico and all the stuff we did around Mexico City. This lens is like the champion lens of my kit. It's my favorite lens. Whether you need to take portraits of people at like 35 or you're doing big landscapes all the way out at 15 or some of these more like detail shots or even more just sort of like establishing shots like this lens just does so much. You want to talk thumbnails, like pfft. some of my favorite thumbnails also have been taken with this lens. I think this was the first lens that I bought for this camera. Now I did mention that the 24 to 105 F4 is like, I think that's the first lens everyone should buy. That was the first lens we got back when my wife got the R and I was kind of playing with the R and, and that lens I think is probably the first lens you should buy. But if you're looking to build out like a trilogy kit, you would be hard pressed to do better than the 15 to 35. With that said, there's I think two things to consider with the 15 to 35 that had I been making this purchase decision today in 2022, I don't think I would have bought the 15 to 35. As much as I love all the photos, as much as all the videos that were shot on this channel now over the last year and some change have been done through this lens, this lens is, is it. The two things that I would consider is one, the price. Yes, you're paying a lot, I think well over $2,000 for this particular lens. When you look at that price, especially compared to some of these other lenses where like the 50 mil really does have to compete with that 28 to 70, with the 24 to 70 and the 7200 is sort of pulling this triple duty against the 100 mil macro and the 85s and and even the 100 to 500 the 15 to 35 for me kind of really only competes with the 35 mil prime or maybe if i wanted a 24 mil prime uh both of which canada doesn't offer in rf versions yet and it sort of has this little brother which is the 14 to 35 f4 now what i could tell you about these videos here is I, I shoot these videos in this studio at F4 because I want that focal plane to be wide enough to allow me to mostly stay in focus. Obviously, if I reach out here, then we lose focus. <laughs> but even at F2.8, I find is a little too tight of a focal plane to be doing video in here. I'd, I'd much rather have the F4 in here. When it comes to video, most of my video on this camera is shot at f4 if i'm outside maybe i'm shooting like f5 6 maybe f8 depending on if i have a vnd or just like a cp filter on and then when it comes to photography as much as i love a lot of these photos so many of them were shot at f4 f5 6 i'm not actually shooting a lot at f2 8 with my photography with this wide of a lens choice or with this particular focal length because it's one of those focal lengths where you want stuff in focus. You want to be able to see the surroundings and sort of get immersed in what's going on. And even still at F4, you're sh if you're shooting at such a depth, remember that bokeh, that nice soft blur that everyone likes, is not just a function of aperture. It's a function of aperture and focal length and then applied to your to your composition. So as, as shallow as you go to as far deep as you go. All of that is a function of how much blur you're going to get. And if you're taking a 35 out or even shooting as wide as 15 and you're going to go shoot on a frozen lake, or you're going to go shoot out over the jungles of Mexico, you're going to still get plenty of blur with F4 or even F5.6. So I think if I was going to make this purchase again today, I'm, I'm not going to sell this lens. This lens is awesome. But if I were someone who needed to make this purchase decision today in 2022, I would probably go with the 14 to 35 F4, save like $1,000 on buying that lens. 
and then apply that to maybe getting like a Sigma EF style, you know, 35, one, four, and then have an extra 35 prime, um, or apply that to being able to get the 50 F12 or the 70 to 200. I will also say this, the one outlier of the 15 to 35 now in this entire kit is the fact that uh, it's an 82 millimeter thread mount and the other two lenses are 77. And if you don't wanna be adapting your filters all the time, the 14 to 35 is also a 77 millimeter thread mount. So you can buy one set of filters, all 77 millimeters for your VNDs, your polarizers, UV filters. Maybe if you want more like cinema, like anamorphic flare type, stuff or some of like the mist filters that are out there having to only buy one set and not having to like go through the hassle of adapting to different lenses as you you know work um that's kind of nice i i really like that so i would like to have the 14 to 35 for those reasons you could save a little bit you're still covering i think all the aperture that you want for that lens um, and, and you could save some hassle with the, um, the filter stuff. So let me know down in the comments below, uh, what your kit looks like. What is the Trinity RF setup that you have? You know, it doesn't even need to be RF. If you have a few lenses that you really dig and why leave it in the comments down below. And if maybe you don't have that setup yet, leave down below a comment about, um, the lens you want to buy the lens that most excites you. And if this video maybe changed your mind on what you might wanna pick up. To all of you, I just gotta say thank you so much for watching. My name is Stephen Foster. Be kind in life and in the comments below. Subscribe to this channel if you have yet to. I think that's it. We'll do it again soon, all right? Later. Yeah.